here we have a simple program. So this is single threaded. So the way this will look when it's executed is we have a big blob. So this big blob represents a process. So any global variables exist within this big blob. So those are just global variables. And what we have is a thread of execution that goes through the process. So in a single threaded application, which is just a traditional application, we have this single thread that runs through. So it has access to all the global variables and if it needs to call out to any methods or any functions, then the execution continues down, jumps off to the position it needs to go to, to the method it needs to go to, and then returns. So we have this single path all the way through. That means we are only ever executing a single instruction at a time. So here's uh, an example of a multi-threaded program. So what I've created here is a class. So there's a class here, and that class uh, defines a single method, and that single method is called run. And what that's going to act as is an entry point into our thread. So when we create this thread, when we start this thread, what will happen is that we're going to use this run method. So it's going to come in and it's going to print out about sleep, then going to wait for five seconds, and then it's going to print out finished sleeping. So I'll go through first how this is going to look in the process space. So again, what we have is our big blob, which is our process. And what's going to happen is because all this is just the definition of a class, we skip that and we start executing the stuff down here. So let's start drawing that. So what we have is our first thread starts. So this is just because we've run the program. So this is, it's starting to do this stuff. So when it's done that, it's created a single global variable. That single global variable is an object of type my thread. So it's one of these things. So it's our thread that we've started to deal with. At this point, we haven't started our thread, so nothing's actually happening yet. We only have a single thread of execution. Then, because we have this thread referenced as m, we call m.start. So what that does is that starts our new object, and it starts it running with an additional set of information. So here, we start doing stuff, and what that's going to do is our second thread, or my thread thread, is going to print out about to sleep, and then it's going to pause for five seconds. Now it's worth noting that what's going to happen is that after we have executed m.start, we then go into a sleep here. So the first thread, this thread, is currently just pausing and it's waiting. So it sleeps for one second, and then it prints out, I'm still running. So it's done our print, so it's done our sleep here, then it does our print statement, and then it actually just exits out. It just stops running. So there's no more execute, no more instructions there, so there's nothing else happening. So our second thread, our my thread, has printed out about to sleep, so it's done its instruction there. Then it started sleeping, then it's printed out finished. And all the way through that, it's obviously continued its execution until the end, and then it's finished. So what's happened is we've started our thread here. We've created it and started it. The m.start, the .start method, is actually just part of the thread class that we inherit from. So this thing is what we inherit from threading.thread. It includes a default start, a default stop, and a default run. The start, the default start will start the execution of that individual thread. The stop will stop the execution of that individual thread. And the run is what you need to override. So you actually need to put some instructions inside the run, which will be executed by, a, by the thread. So when the dot .start is called, what that actually means is start up this thread and start up this thread by running the code that exists within the uh, run method. Now it's quite possible to override both the start and the stop. 
so you can override the start so that what it does is it, it does some setup information before it starts to execute the thread and then starts running the thread so you can actually call a thread creation by using just a standard thread object so you don't actually have to create a class to do threading all you need to be able to do is point a thread to a piece of code that it's going to execute and you can actually point it to a method or in this case it's acting as a function it doesn't need to be wrapped in an object which it can then run so what I've done is extracted the code from a start method from within an example of a thread so it's in a class that's implementing a thread. So what we have is we see the definition of a start there, and I've removed all the initialization code. So at this point, we could be doing things that are interesting for that particular class. So this is where it gets interesting. This is where we're setting up thread information. So what we're saying here is we're actually creating our thread, which is what this thing is doing. The non is for the name of a thread group. So what we could do is we could actually combine lots of threads together and treat them all the same. So we could start them all, we could stop them all, we could pause them all. Uh, at the moment this is actually just reserved, so it isn't implemented yet. We also here have a piece of code that is going to be run. So this is where we are actually going to start our execution of our thread. So it has to point to a block of code that's going to do something. So in this case, it's actually pointing to the run method that is part of our class. So we could point it to anything, but the way we actually create threads is we have a start method which is sets up the activity. If we don't want to do anything interesting, we can just allow the start method to be over to be used from our super class, from our thread class. We have the stop method which if we want to override, we can, to do any shutdown information, but we don't, again, we don't have to. And then we have the run method. The run method, we override, and we actually put the code inside it that's going to do the stuff that we find interesting. So that's all that's pointing to. Piece of code that's going to implement our thread. Next, this is just the name of the thread. In this case, this thread is called, is called nothing, it's no name. Um, we could pass it any name we wanted to and call it something. Um, by default the a unique name gets constructed which is called thread dash n where n is just a number. And these two things are just arguments. So here is an array of arguments, in this case nothing, there's no array. And then here is a dictionary of keywords uh, with name value pairs. Again in this case nothing. 